If you make a mistake, it is better no one witnesses it. Ask this poor guy. This is Jorge Larionda. He will tell you how much he wished no one would see his. A mistake he made was witnessed by millions of viewers on live TV broadcast. A mistake of far-reaching consequences. Let me take you back to the 2010 World Cup held in South Africa. Larionda is an Uruguayan referee who was in charge of the knockout round match between England and Germany. When England, in red shirts, were in, in deficit of one goal, this is what happened. James Milner now inside the Germany half. He plays it forward to Defoe. It's Jermaine Defoe on the edge of the box. It's Frank Lampard! Surely it's a goal for England! It must have crossed the line! No, says the referee! Unbelievable! The ball has clearly crossed the line here. England have been robbed of a clear goal. As we saw in the recreation of the incident, Larionda mistakenly disapproved a clear goal by England. From where he was standing on the pitch, he just did not see what was visible to us, to many in the stadium and around the world. The ball that was kicked by England's player Frank Lampard had completely crossed the goal line before bouncing back onto the field. This goal, nicknamed the ghost goal, a goal never officially recognized, essentially became the goal that would change football forever. It changed my life too. It let me choose football as the focus of my academic research. To me, football is not just a form of entertainment or display of physical skill. It was a comprehensive human arena, a place where people can interact and engage in activities without a significant influence of technology. In 2010, when Lampard scored this ghost goal, I was a high school teacher and curriculum developer, and the human arena that I was most familiar with was the classroom. And that ghost goal, and more importantly, what followed afterwards, got me thinking and researching what eventually led to a PhD dissertation. So, yes, I am a doctor of football. So, as a doctor, let me tell you what I know about the game. The modern version of football that we know today was codified in a formal document in 1863. A few years later, a referee and two assistants were added to the game to make unbiased decisions and maintain control when necessary. For decades, the authority of the referees went unchallenged. However, television broadcasting changed that. The referee's proximity to the events on the field was no longer an advantage compared with the ability of cameras to zoom, replay, and show events from multiple angles in slow motion. A TV crew can calmly assess the legality of an incident that occurred on the field. And these two worlds, the football match and its broadcast, never really met. In the football's human arena, players are allowed to make mistakes during the game, and the referee had the same right. It's part of the game. It's part of the experience. For more than a century, fans loved this human aspect of football, allowing for mistakes as an accepted part of everyday life. It's a fair game. Everybody plays their part. The footballers play, the fans cheer and swear the referee, and the referee upholds the rules of the game in true fairness. But that changed in 2010, when even the spectators in the stadium could see Larionda's poor decision with their smartphones. That ghost goal caused fans to feel anger rather than sense of fairness when it came to refereeing mistakes. The crowd began seeing sincere mistakes as injustice. In 2012, two years after Lampard's ghost goal, the two worlds, the football match and its broadcast, eventually met. Goal line technology was introduced that shows if a ball crossed the line or not became the first domino piece to fall. Today, in any case of disputed goal or penalty situation, the referee uses technology. Replay became real time. 
This is the video assistant referee, better known as VAR. Since this technology introduced in football's human arena, it has greatly reduced the occurrence of refereeing mistakes. In 2010, Germany benefited from a refereeing mistake that could have been avoided with the use of cameras. But 12 years later, the tables turned. In the World Cup held in Qatar in 2022, the Germans were eliminated during the early stages. Look what happened. As we can see in the image, a VAR, showed a, a VAR approved a goal to Japan after showing the location of the ball before its assist. As we can all see, a location a human eye would probably miss. Every football fan knows the cliché. 22 men chase after a ball for 90 minutes, and at the end, the Germans win. <laughs> well, technology changed even that. Thanks to forensic evidence images like this, we have entered the phase of precision in football, an era in which football refereeing mistakes have almost vanished. Technology has permanently transformed football. And with that, to me, something quite crucial went missing. VAR has led to an increased awareness. Players became more cautious, less spontaneous. It negatively affects the a fluency and the naturalness of the game. This human arena is less human now. And what about that other human arena I value greatly? The human arena that sees more and more technology introduced. The human arena which has been my profession for two decades now. What about the classroom? Well, just like football before the VAR, Classroom is a human arena. A teacher and students who are free to think and act and make mistakes. Well, I'm not naive. Technology has already entered the classroom. Students' mobile devices know more than any human. These devices can serve the lesson and promote thinking as I teach my students at the college hosting this event. However, knowing too much ahead of time might prevent them from making mistakes. And as much as we don't like mistakes, we need them. We need them to remain human. We need them to remain free and creative. Mistakes are a crucial element in education. Permitting students to make mistakes can sometimes lead them to amazing insights or even moments of genius. We must allow some room for error, since the margin of error can also be the margin of creativity. If there was a genius of the game before Messi, it was Maradona. Well, look at this image. This is an artistic representation of a moment achieved iconic status in football history. This is an illustration of an illegal goal scored by the Argentinian player who used his hand to punch the ball into the net in 1986 World Cup game against England. Maradona later claimed that uh, he scored with the hand of God. <laughs> well, Maradona was a genius, but his genius was met with a referee mistake. This could only have happened in a place without technology like VAR, a place that once was a human arena. So, uh, technology has already entered the classroom. However, before implementing it in the entire educational human arena, I ask you to give it some thought, maybe even some more time. What would happen if technology eliminated mistakes from being made during a lesson? If students are expected to only provide correct answers, is that the kind of education we desire? Is it an education at all? Look at the impact the goal line incident had on football. So hold the line. 
For now, let's keep the classroom a human arena. Thank you very much.